Bill Gates and Google DeepMind CEO Demis Asabis just gave us the clearest picture of where AI actually stands right now. If you're into AI and interested to get an insider's peek, get ready because this is going to be a good one. AI is the most important thing going on. And, you know, throughout the history of Microsoft, we always were thinking about, okay, when could we make breakthroughs in AI? That digital revolution that, you know, created the internet, uh, got, you know, everything online, that's the foundation uh, that the AI is coming into. You know, for me personally, uh, you know, now my full-time work is the foundation. And so uh, because of my uh, relationship with OpenAI and Microsoft, I stay very on top of the latest advances. And one of the foundation's goals is to make sure the poorest in the world, the people who never meet a doctor, don't get farming advice, don't have a good tutor, uh, that we're going to have AI free to them in their native language so they can explain their health challenge, they can explain you know, what's going on with their crops and, and what step they should take. So making sure it is in a 10 or 20 year leg uh, before those most in need see the benefit, uh, that is a, a huge priority for us. But are you worried like some that AI is going to be a bubble? AI is only a bubble in the sense that not all of these valuations will end up going up. Uh, some of them will go down, but in the sense that behind it is a technology that's deeply profound that will reshape the world, there's not the slightest doubt about that. Does it mean all of these companies with high valuations will all be winners? No, it's going to be hyper competitive. Uh, a reasonable percentage of those companies won't uh, be worth that much. So in the sense of some uh, overvaluation, yes. In the sense of is this uh, profound and real and is going to provide all of these benefits, including uh, the he health, education, and agriculture that we're working on, absolutely. Nobody should have any, any doubt about that. Gates is making the case that some of these high valuations won't hold up and some will indeed drop. But the underlying technology is profoundly real and will reshape the world. Gates' foundation is already working on getting AI to the poorest populations for health, education and agriculture. And he wants to make sure there's no delay before people who need it the most can access it. Let's take a look at what AI is already accomplishing right now, today, not in some distant future. Take self-driving technology. Tesla and Waymo are operating actual robo-taxi services in multiple cities. Real people are getting into the cars with no human driver and going places. This seemed like science fiction just not too long ago. The sensors, the processing power, the algorithms needed to navigate complex city streets with pedestrians and cyclists and unpredictable human drivers. All of that had to come together and it did. Every mile these systems drive, they get better. Traffic accidents kill over a million people globally every single year. These are massive numbers. The vast majority of those accidents happen because humans get distracted, tired, drunk, or just make mistakes. Self-driving systems don't have those same problems. They don't check their phone, they don't fall asleep, their reaction time is measured in milliseconds. As this technology spreads, we're looking at potentially saving hundreds of thousands of lives annually, plus all the productive time people waste sitting in traffic, or the costs associated with accidents and insurance. Self-driving vehicles operating as a service could reshape urban transportation entirely. Then you have something like AlphaFold, which might even be more profound in terms of impact. This is what Google DeepMind is working on. Proteins are the fundamental machinery of life. Everything your body does, like fighting disease, digesting food, moving muscles, all depends on proteins. And proteins are just long chains of amino acids that fold into specific three-dimensional shapes. That shape determines what the protein does. For decades, scientists have been trying to predict how proteins fold. You can sequence the amino acids easily now, but figuring out what shape they'll fold into, that required years of expensive experimentational work for each protein. It was a very, very time consuming process. There are millions of proteins we knew the sequence for, but had no idea what shape they took, which meant we didn't really understand what they did. Google DeepMind's AlphaFold solves this problem. An AI system that can predict protein structures from just the amino acid sequence with extraordinary accuracy. 
DeepMind released predictions for basically every protein known to science. Hundreds of millions of structures. They just handed this to researchers worldwide for free. Drug discovery relies on understanding protein structures. If you want to design a drug that targets a specific protein involved in a disease, you need to know that protein shape so your drug molecule can fit into it like a lock and key. AlphaFold accelerates this entire process. Research that would have taken years can now happen in days or weeks. We're already seeing results. Researchers are using AlphaFold to work on malaria vaccines, on understanding antibiotic resistance, on rare genetic diseases. The entire field of structural biology got fast forwarded by what might be decades. And this compounds over time. Every drug developed faster means the patients helped sooner, means more researchers freed up to tackle other problems, means the whole system moves faster. Bill Gates mentioned his foundation's work on health, education, and agriculture for the world's poorest populations. These AI applications connect directly to that mission. Imagine a farmer in rural Africa who can take a photo of their diseased crops and get an instant diagnosis and treatment recommendation in their own language. That's doable now. The computer vision to identify plant diseases exists. The translation technology exists. The mobile phone infrastructure exists in most places. Or consider healthcare in regions where there might be one doctor for tens of thousands of people. An AI system that can handle initial symptom screening, that can walk someone through basic diagnostics, that can identify when something is serious enough to warrant the long journey to see that doctor. It's triaging and education and providing a baseline level of care where none existed before. This is why Gates isn't concerned about whether AI is real, despite acknowledging bubble dynamics in valuations. The technology is already saving lives and creating economic value in concrete, measurable ways. Drone com bubble, Pets.com failed spectacularly, but Amazon was in that same bubble, with people calling its valuation crazy. The internet was still going to reshape commerce regardless of which specific companies succeeded. Same dynamic here. Some AI startups with massive valuations will disappear. Training these models takes enormous amounts of resources. Getting distribution is incredibly difficult when you're competing with Microsoft and Google. But that doesn't change what the technology enables. Self-driving vehicles will still transform transportation. Protein folding predictions will still accelerate drug discovery. AI tutoring systems will still help kids learn. Medical diagnostic tools will still catch diseases earlier. So Gates is confident in the technology despite some overvaluation. Demis Asabis, Google DeepMind CEO and founder, takes this even further when he explains why Google specifically is positioned to win regardless of how the bubble question plays out. Um, and last time we spoke, you said that you thought AI was overhyped in the short term, mm -hmm. but underhyped in the long term. Um, and I know that this year there's been a lot of chatter about an AI bubble. Yes. What happens if there is a bubble and it bursts? What happens? Well, look, I, I think, yes, that I still subscribe to it's overhyped in the short term still and still underappreciated in the in the medium to long term. What's going to, you know, how transformative it's going to be. Um, yeah, there is a lot of talk, of course, right now about AI bubbles. Um, in my view, uh, I, I think it, there isn't that there, it's not one thing, binary thing. Are we or aren't we? Mm -hmm. I think there are parts of the AI ecosystem that are probably in bubbles. What one example would be, you know, just seed rounds for startups uh, that basically haven't even got going yet, and they're raising at tens of billions of dollars mm -hmm. uh, valuations just out of the gate. It's sort of interesting to see how how can that be sustainable. Um, you know, my guess is probably not, uh, at least not in general. Um, so there's that area. Then the people are worrying about, obviously, there's there's the big tech valuations and other things. I think there's a lot of real business underlying that. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it remains to be seen. I mean, I think maybe for any, any uh, new, tr unbelievably transformative and profound technology, of which, of course, AI is probably the most profound, uh, you're going to get this uh, overcorrection in a way. Mm -hmm. So when we started DeepMind, no one believed in it. No one thought it was possible. People were wondering, what's AI for anyway? And then now, fast forward 10, 15 years, 
And now, obviously, it's, it seems to be the only thing people talk about in business. And um, so it's, a, you, you, but you're sort of going to get, it's almost an overreaction mm. to the underreaction. Um, so I think that's natural. I think we saw that with the internet. I think we saw it with mobile. And I think we're, we're seeing or going to see it again with AI. Um, I don't worry too much about are we in a bubble or not, because from my perspective, as you know, leading Google DeepMind and also obviously with Google as, as an alphabet as a whole, our job and my job is to make sure we, either way we uh, are come out of it very strong. And I think and we're very well positioned and I think we are tremendously well positioned either way. So if it continues going like it is now, fantastic. We'll carry on, you know, all of these great things that we're doing and experiments and progress towards AGI. If there's a retrenchment, fine. Then also I think we're in a great position because uh, we have our own stack with TPUs. We also have um, all these incredible Google products and, you know, the profits that all makes to plug in our AI into. And we're doing that with search is totally revolutionized by AI overviews, AI mode with Gemini under the hood. We're looking at workspace, at email, at, you know, at YouTube. So there's all these amazing things in Chrome. There's a lot of these amazing things that um, AI we can see already are low hanging fruit to apply uh, Gemini to, as well of course as Gemini mm. app, which is doing really well as well now, and 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 the you know, idea of a universal assistant. So there's new products, and I think they will, in the fullness of time, be super valuable. But we don't have to rely on that. We can just power up our existing uh, ecosystem, uh, which is all sort of. I think that's what's happened over the last year. We've got that really efficient now. Demis Sabe says that Google has the exact combination needed to dominate AI. They have all these existing products that already make massive profits. Search, Gmail, YouTube, Chrome, Workspace, and more. They're plugging AI into this existing ecosystem. There's a formula for winning in technology. You need two things that are both really hard to get. You need to build something that people actually want to use, and you need to get a way of getting it in front of them. Product and distribution. Most companies only have one. Google has both and overwhelmingly. Google search is used by billions of people every single day. People go to Google like a reflex when they need information. That habit is so integrated that Google it became a verb. Gmail has over a billion active users. YouTube is the second most visited website on the planet. Chrome is the dominant web browser. Android runs on most of the world's smartphones. This matters enormously for AI because distribution is arguably the hardest part. You can build the most amazing AI model in the world, but if nobody uses it, it doesn't matter. Look at all the AI startups trying to compete. They build impressive technology, but then they face the brutal reality of customer acquisition. How do you get people to try your product? How do you break their existing habits? How do you get them to switch from what they already use? Google doesn't have this problem. They already have the users, Billions of them every day coming back repeatedly. When Google adds AI features to search, those features immediately get exposed to more people than most startups will reach in their entire existence. When they integrate Gemini into Gmail, it's instantly available to over a billion inboxes. Search is the obvious example. Google completely revolutionized search with AI overviews. Instead of just showing links, search now synthesizes information and gives you a direct answer. Gmail can now help you write emails. It suggests responses. It can draft messages based on brief prompts. Google Docs has an AI writing assistant. Google Sheets can analyze data and generate insights. These are tools people already use for work every single day. The AI features aren't asking people to change their behavior or adopt new software. They're just making existing workflows better. Maps, photos, calendar, Google has dominant products across so many categories. Each one becomes a distribution channel for AI capabilities. They're improvements to tools that people already depend on. Now combine that distribution advantage with the product side. Demis mentions that Google has their own chip stack with TPUs. Training and running AI models requires massive computational power. Most companies rent this from cloud providers. They're dependent on AWS or Microsoft Azure or Google Cloud. They're paying by the hour for GPU access. Google makes their own AI chips specifically optimized for machine learning workloads called TPUs, Tensor Processing Units. Now, if you're a bit confused and if you've been wanting to learn about AI but don't know where to start, I built a course that walks you through everything step by step, from the basics to deeper concepts like compute and physical AI. Once you join, you get lifetime access, and as we add new modules, the price will rise. 
So right now is the lowest price it will be. Link is in the description. So back to TPUs, they've been developing these for years. This means their costs to train and run models are different than companies buying compute on the open market. When there's a downturn and everyone's worried about efficiency and unit economics, having your own chip infrastructure is an enormous advantage. It also means they're not fully dependent on Nvidia or other chip suppliers. There have been shortages of high-end AI chips, companies waiting months for GPU deliveries. Google's making their own. They control their own supply chain for the most critical resource in AI development. Demis Asabis leads Google DeepMind, which merged DeepMind and Google Brain, probably the two best AI research teams on the planet. DeepMind was behind AlphaGo, AlphaFold, and countless other breakthroughs. Google Brain developed Transformers, the architecture that underlies basically all modern large language models. Gemini, their current model family, is competitive with anything else out there. The product quality is real, they're at the frontier of what's possible, and they're continuing to push forward on AGI research while simultaneously shipping products. That combination, cutting edge AI research plus owned infrastructure plus dominant distribution is basically impossible to replicate. Every other big tech companies don't have this complete package. Microsoft has distribution through Windows and Office and Azure, but they're buying the AI capabilities from OpenAI. They're a partner, not the builder. If that relationship changes, they're exposed. Apple has distribution through iOS and the App Store, but they're way behind on AI model development. Meta has strong AI research, but less dominant distribution channels outside of social media. Amazon has cloud infrastructure, but weaker consumer products. Google's the only one with world-class AI research, owned chip infrastructure, and multiple billion user products across different categories. And this is what Demis means when he says they're well-positioned either way. Demis Asabis also mentions this is a pattern we've seen before with the internet and mobile. During the dot-com crash, most internet startups failed, but Amazon, Google, eBay, the ones with real products and actual users came out stronger. Same with mobile. Tons of app companies disappeared, but the platforms with distribution thrived. Companies raising at massive valuations before they've even built a real product. This is pure speculation. Maybe one of them becomes huge, but most won't. They're priced for perfection before proving anything. Google doesn't need to make those bets. They can watch what works, learn from it, and integrate the best ideas into their own products. Or they can acquire promising companies once valuations become more reasonable. One of our clients started with zero audience. Now they're doing $100,000 months thanks to YouTube. And they're not alone. We've helped three businesses hit that level just by growing them a YouTube channel. Want to see how this could work for your business? Book a call with me below.